we're just not streaming or recording. So we can go ahead and get started. The mics are working and we're recording the meeting. Okay. So I don't welcome people online. Mm -mm. I'll just have to say the streaming is. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this called June 21st, 2018 meeting of the North Carolina State Board of Education. I'm Bill Kobe, chairman of the board, and I call this meeting to, to order. Um, and now I ask Dr. Townsend Smith to call the roll to determine if we have a quorum of the board participating. I know to all who are listening to this recording that a quorum is seven members. Un unfortunately, um, our streaming is not working this morning, so the uh, this meeting will be recorded and available to anybody uh, who requests a recording. So, uh, Dr. Townsend Smith, if you would call the roll, please. Chairman Covey? Uh, here. Vice Chair Davis? Here. Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest? State Treasurer Farwell? Mr. Alcorn? Here. Mr. Chastain? Here. Ms. White? Here. Mr. Duncan? Here. Mr. McDevitt? Here. Ms. Willoughby? Here. Mr. Keenan? Ms. Taylor? Here. Dr. Oxendine? Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, Dr. Townsend Smith. I will now read the ethics statement that is required of us. Board members are reminded that it is our duty to avoid conflicts of interest and the appearance of conflicts of interest as we handle the work of this board. Does any member of the board know of any conflict of interest or any appearance of conflict with respect to any matters coming before us at this meeting? If so, please state them for the record. If during the course of the meeting you become aware of an actual or apparent conflict of interest, please bring the matter to the attention of the chair. It will then be your duty to abstain from participating in the discussion on the matter and from voting on the matter. Board members, you have seen the agenda for this June 21st, 2018 meeting and had an opportunity to review it. I ask if there are any requests for changes to the agenda. If not, I request a motion for approval and please state your name as you make a motion or second a motion. Is there a motion? Ms. Willoughby, I move approval. Okay, uh, is there a second? Alan Duncan, I second. And while I have the floor just for one moment, I'd like to abstain from BSOP 1 because there are a number of Guilford County schools on there that are accepted while uh, some are not. And that conflict ends as of June 30th because I've resigned from the board as of the end of the fiscal year. But for this last time, I would uh, ask that that abstention be noted for this item. Okay. okay. Rick Alcorn, I'll note that. Yeah, and we will have a roll call vote, and uh, you can uh, say abstain uh, at that time. Um, okay, now, Dr. Townsend Smith, please call the roll to capture the vote. Chairman Kobe? Uh, yes. Vice Chair Davis? Yes. Mr. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Chastain? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Willoughby? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Okay, the motion passes unanimously to approve the agenda. Uh, I note for the record that the board now is required to take a roll call vote on all items requiring action on the agenda. We will now proceed directly to our committee meetings and I'll call, uh, we'll begin with the Business Operations Committee. So um, Mr. Greg Alcorn is the chair and I turn it over to him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Greg Alcorn, chair of the uh, Business Op Committee along with Todd Chastain, vice chair. And we have one actual first read, Business Op 1. 
USDA Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program, and it's being asked to put this on the uh, Action on First Read uh, in order to get it started for the 2018-19 uh, school year. This is the allocation of uh, about $4 million to 200 elementary schools serving over 90, or about 90,000 students with the, the uh, and these schools were selected um, by the free and reduced lunch percentage, and the lowest percentage in this group was 80% free and reduced lunch, many of the 100%. So make a motion, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, to approve uh, BizDoc 1 for the allocation of the funds to these 200 schools uh, to start a, a, uh, the uh, Fresh Fruit Festival program for this next year. Okay, a motion by Mr. Alcorn to approve BS BizOp 1. Uh, is there Chastain, a second? Chastain second. Okay, Mr. Chastain seconds. Uh, Dr. Townsend Smith, will you call the roll, please? Chairman Kobe? Yes. Vice Chair Davis? Yes. Mr. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Chastain? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Willoughby? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. And Mr. Duncan is recused? Yes. Got it. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, we do have uh, staff on the phone. I did not ask uh, and, and would ask uh, Dr. Lynn Harvey if uh, she wants to make any other comments on this in the uh, I think it's only proper that I provide her that um, uh, that stage, if you will. Okay, uh, Dr. Harvey, I know you're on the phone, so this is an yes, opportunity to make a comment or two. Thank you for your approval. I'm happy this morning to bring greetings from North Carolina school nutrition professionals, many of whom are convening this week for a week of professional development in Greensboro. So if you're in the neighborhood, we invite you to, to join us. Uh, but thank you again for acting so quickly so that we could spread the good news and the resources that accompany the Fresh Food and Vegetable Program to our schools for the coming year. Thank you, Dr. Harvey. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, please, our uh, committee report, Mr. Chair. I'd, I show a discussion item. Oh, no, this, no, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong place. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Alcorn. We now move to the Education, Innovation, and Charter School Committee, and I recognize the chairman, uh, Ms. Amy White. Ms. White. Good morning, everyone. This is Amy White, and I, along with Mr. Wayne McDevitt, chair the, Ed chair the Education, Innovation, and Charter School Committee. We've got one item for action on first read for you this morning, um, dealing with the assumption of Heritage Collegiate Leadership Academy. Just a little background information um, for you. We're bringing this to you for action on first read because we're up against a June 30th deadline. Um, in November of this past year, on the 2nd, the State Board voted to initiate the revocation of Heritage Collegiate Leadership Academy that's in Bertie County. Um, the Office of Charter Schools and the Charter School Advisory Committee um, have managed that assumption process and interviewed um, two, two candidates for possible assumption. They met earlier this month and they are bringing forward the recommendation of Global Education Resources, um, LLC. And so I've got Mr. Stephen Walker representing the Charter School Advisory Board that's on the call with us this morning that would like to walk you through um, some of those recommendations and after our conversation I'll make the recommendation. Thank you Chair White, Chairman Kobe. Uh, basically we, uh, as, as you know, we'd gone through a, a process and, and had we had three applicants. Uh, one applicant withdrew right before uh, the interviews and then we interviewed the other two applicants and uh, for the vast majority of the Charter School Advisory Board there was only one dissenting vote on the motion uh, chose Global Education Resources. Uh, it's a new group uh, that's formed but it's a group that's not new to charter schools. All uh, there's 
there's there's three uh, three groups of people that came together to form uh, Global Education Resources. Uh, they have uh, they actually have uh, three schools that they run in North Carolina now. One's Alpha Academy, one's Quality Education Academy, and one's Torchlight Academy, and uh, they serve a very similar demographic to what Heritage Collegiate uh, Academy did in in Bertie County and does serve now. Uh, one of the things that stuck out to us is in the last uh, of the last six combined growth scores that these three schools uh, have had, uh, five out of the six exceed growth. Uh, shows that they're really growing students and that they uh, they know what they're doing, especially when it comes to the education of the students. Uh, they put together a board that was uh, uh, locally based, which was very impressive uh, to the Charter School Advisory Board to have so many local people on their board. Their board chair is Tuesday Sauer, who's well known in the community there. Uh, they put together uh, uh, about half their board is from Bertie County, which was uh, very impressive. And then the board just, I think, really impressed everybody on the Charter School Advisory Board. Uh, they're willing to have the school remain open uh, and, and start back school in August or September, uh, whereas the, the other applicant that we looked at wanted to close the school for a year and then reopen, which to the, most of the members of the Charter School Advisory Board didn't sound a whole lot like an assumption. It sounded like a new charter uh, that you'd just be starting from scratch uh, with, with all the students. And so this one uh, was an assumption, and I think the choice was pretty clear. And it looks like that this uh, group, uh, this board that will partner with Global Education Resources uh, will do a great job and can, can get things back on the right track there in Bertie County. I can answer any questions you have. Question from my colleagues. Um, um, this is Becky. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Can I no, go ahead, Becky. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, as far as the um, the debt, um, I'm assuming whoever takes over the school would assume the debt that's on the books. Is that correct? I think there's a question as to how that debt's going to work. Uh, both groups said that they were willing to work with the uh, holders of that debt to, to see if they could uh, uh, to work something out uh, that would be beneficial for everybody. And so both both groups that came before us, they, they made that commitment to us because I think nobody wants to see vendors left out in the cold uh, and left holding the bag uh, for, for a charter school that's uh, not doing so well financially. But uh, both of them realized and both of the groups uh, seem to have the financial ability to be able to uh, to take care of that debt. Okay, because when I listened to the audio last evening, it but I did hear that, but it sounds like this particular group was not aware of what the debt actually was and how much it was. And one of my concerns is that this school has around, I'm thinking, 100 students. I'm not sure, give or take some. And this is a huge debt. Um, I mean, I just want to make sure that whoever's going to take this over does not get into a financial bind because 100 students, you know, is, is kind of close to breaking even. And, and then to have additional debt is a concern. I, I don't want to see a repeat happen in Berkeley County because they deserve, they deserve a, a quality charter school, and we want one to be successful. The last thing we need is, um, you know, another one not doing well and putting a bad taste in, in the mouth of the, the small communities who deserve a good charter school. So those would be my main concerns. I mean, I, you know, as far as those concerns go, it's really a legal question that I think that, that this group will have to have uh, their lawyers answer as to whether the liability goes. The, the statute's pretty clear. It says the assets of the school are transferred to the assuming uh, entity. It doesn't say anything about the liability. So uh, that's, that's really a legal question that they'll have to figure out. Uh, I think, you know, with uh, all of these, uh, all the schools that, uh, that make up Global Education Resources, that group, they have uh, been run well. Uh, they're financially in good shape, and I think that these people have the uh, financial uh, acumen to be able to pull this off. This, I have a, this is Trisha. I have a question. Um, how much is the debt that um, Ms. Taylor referred to? We're thinking, uh, I, if, I, if I remember correctly, I think it's around $200,000. $200, yeah, this is Dave Machado, Director Office of Charter School. The, uh, both groups are aware of the three largest uh, liabilities, the, which are to the modular company that uh, they're leasing the 
the building two, the property owner that the modulars are on, and then the construction company that installed the modulars. And that debt is somewhere between uh, probably 250 to uh, 300,000. And uh, Global is aware of those because I have personally put them in touch with those three vendors. And so this is Mrs. White. Are there um, are there other um, debt that um, Global Education Resources might not be aware of? I understand that they were going to need a due diligence period to um, discern whether or not they might um, fully be capable of assuming all the debt. Some they were aware of and some they were not. Can you clarify? I, I'm sure that there is some smaller debt that they that might have been incurred by Heritage that they are not aware of. Uh, that is why they want to do a little due diligence after this vote. But um, I'm not aware of any other large debt, but there might be some out there. Um, so this is Ms. Taylor again. Um, Mrs. White, so if they have this due diligence time, um, <laughs> when are they supposed to uh, make a decision. I mean, are we going to hear their response to their due diligence in, or how they're going to handle if it's 250 or 300 or whatever or for 350? Are we going to have some response from them of how they're going to deal with that? My my recommendation if, I mean, what I would do uh, if, if you know, if I called all the shots and I definitely don't, uh, but if, if I did, I would, I would say, okay, you, you give them the assumption uh, and then when they look at it, if, if they determine this is not something we can do, they can always turn the charter back in. Uh, they can relinquish the charter uh, if that's the case. Uh, I, I think there's, there's really, that's the only option that you have is you can go with this group. The other, the other group that, that was in here, they knew a little bit more about the finances. Of course, I think that's because that group had actually done some of the finances for the school in the past so they they of course knew about the finances of the school a little bit more in depth but if they want to take a, a year off and take a break uh, there it's just like starting a new charter and so we might as well just have some people apply for a new charter for Bertie County uh, at that point so I think the only way that this school is going to be able to stay open and the only way that this assumption process is going to work is to is to go ahead and award the assumption to the uh, board that's partnering with global education resources and then if they find that it's it's just not going to happen Happen, uh, then at that point there's really there's really no other option at that point but then just to close the charter which was what the what which is what the state board originally voted to do mr. Walker this is miss white um, can you can you talk me through um, whether um, you think that they could be prepared to submit a plan for to us by by that June 30th deadline, um, is there any appetite um, from my board members um, to to hear from them um, once they've done that due diligence period? You know, maybe by next Thursday, um, once they've gathered any additional information. Do you, you mean the plan for the? Uh, Amy, uh, alternatively, maybe. Uh, approval with a condition that yes, yes. They, uh, that they submit a plan prior to opening the school. And are you speaking about a plan for the debt? Yes. The liabilities. I mean, I would, I would think that that gives you, that gives them nine days to get that prepared and gives them some time to work. And I think that would be reasonable to do it with the condition uh, that they submit a plan by by June thirtieth. But, but I don't know if that's if that's going to require uh, the state board to have another meeting to approve the plan, or if it's just you know it's it's there and then the office. I think it'd be helpful if the office of charter schools could just take a look at it and and give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Well, th this is Bill Kobe. Um, I don't think you should take off the table the possibility that Global would negotiate with the vendors uh, because if I'm a vendor, uh, I would rather have the majority of what I have been owed if I face getting nothing. And if we don't vote for this assumption, basically the vendors aren't going to get a dime. It's very true. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, the concern is that the, at the end of the day, if they assume this, and I think Stephen made it clear that it's, it's, that it's unclear relative to assuming the liability as, as it relates to the law, 
and then uh, a continued uh, debt incurs. Uh, this debt could be instead of 350, as it perhaps is now, uh, it could be 500 in a year or two, and and then we've uh, we've got another set of problems. Thanks, Mr. McDevitt, for that content. I, I, I share that concern. Berkey County is not, I mean, it's, it's a low wealth county as it is, and um, I, I really think they've got to they've got to do their due diligence and let us know what their plan is um, b before we move forward. Um, even if we uh, grant the assumption, what happens if they, they decide they cannot assume that debt on June the 29th? What's our, what's our plan B? I, th I think the plan B is the school closes. I mean, that, that, that was what was going to happen until this settlement was worked out that the state board approved that we would go through the assumption process. And, uh, and so really the, the only chance that this school has to remain open and the only chance uh, that these vendors have to get a dime out of, out of this is for this board to approve the Global Education Resources uh, bid. Mr. Walker, can you speak to um, the, the, the three schools that Global Education Resources already has under its purview um, are, are, are not, um, that while they have um, exceeded growth in the past year, they, they, they don't have strong report card ratings. And so I'm a little bit concerned that we would be um, pulling a, a train down the track um, that's already a, you know, a little not doing well and um, I, I would really love to see us um, put a stipulation in there that requires them, uh, the school to show or meet or exceed growth at the end of the first year. I noticed that you're recommending that um, they would um, have their um, charter assumed and extended through June 30th, uh, 2022. Right. And I mean, in the state board, y'all y'all can put on whatever stipulation you want. Uh, I think this this group will meet growth, at least meet if not exceed growth. I think if you look at these uh, these three schools, they're all C schools. Uh, if you look at what was going on at Heritage Collegiate, they were the uh, lowest school in Bertie County. They were the only F school in Bertie County. Uh, they were not meeting growth, and their proficiency scores were down in the low 20s, uh, as opposed to uh, these schools that are that are having performance composite. It's in the in the 60s. Uh, some of them in the high 60s. Uh, Alpha Academy is a 68 last year, 63 for quality education, and 64 for Torchlight. And then again with two of them, uh, or with with five of the last six growth scores being exceeded growth. And that's with uh, uh, with Torchlight Academy and, and Alpha Academy, for instance, having 95% of their students economically disadvantaged, uh, compared to the school in Bertie County that has 82.9% of their students are economically disadvantaged so uh, they're they're more than doubling probably tripling the performance that Bertie uh, County has with heritage uh, uh, in their schools with actually more economically disadvantaged students so I think they make a very good fit for this uh, for this assumption comments and questions uh, this is Trish I just continue to have the concern about the um, you know resolution of the debt. I mean, it's a small school. I have some concern about that. And, you know, do they have the revenues to put in to get this school turned around immediately? Um, you know, I think there I think there are a lot of concerns. I feel like this is a really rushed decision. And I understand why, but um, it, it feels very rushed. I'm not sure why we're in this position a week before the deadline. So, Ms. Willoughby, um, would you would you like to add a stipulation that they they submit a um, plan for how they're going to resolve that debt to the Office of Charter Schools by Thursday of next week, given the June thirtieth deadline? Well, I think that would be helpful. The school has a history of financial issues, um, which you know at least contributed in part to the failure of the school when it came to us last fall. So. You know, I, I, I know that Dave's office doesn't have, you know, tremendous number of staff to provide oversight, but, you know, I just hate for us to be in the same position a year from now that we're in now with these 100 kids not having been served very well because of all the other factors that come with assuming this, this charter. So sure. I'm happy to, you know, listen to my colleagues and 
you know a lot more about this than I do, Ms. White, because I know you've been in, in conversation. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Thank you. Thank you. Baptized, baptized by fire. Um, um, any, can anyone else have a comment or, or, or question? Uh, Ms. White, this is yes. um, Taylor again. Um, so it, it sounds like we don't have a lot of choices. It, you know, if we're going to go with assumptions, um, it seems that the city has preset on this particular group rather than, than the other because the other group wants to um, have a, um, a year to go into the community and you know, build trust, establish a new reputation, blah, blah. So it's either uh, we take this group or either, as Mr. Walker said, then the school would actually close. And so the question is, you know, these students that have been in the school have not been served well at all, and the families have not. You know, if they went back to the school, I mean, you know, what, what are the negatives of that, you know? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, with such a small number of students, if, if that's not something to consider. Comment? Remind me, the June 30th deadline is our rule? Or is that uh, statutory? Uh, maybe Stephen or someone could answer that. Why? What's it, driving the June 30th deadline? It was part of the settlement part agreement. Part of it is that they have to open. It was, it's, it's the settlement agreement between the State Board of Education and Heritage Collegiate Leadership Academy required this to be done by June 30th, and that's because that's the end of the fiscal oh, so, year. So it's part of the agreement. Right. Okay. Uh, Ms. White, are yes, you ready sir. to make a motion? Okay. Any any other any other um, recommendations or comments from my colleagues? Ms. White, this is uh, Eric Davis. If we're going to move forward, I share all the concerns that have been mentioned. But if we're going to move forward, I like both of your stipulations that they have to submit a plan showing and satisfy our office that they can uh, manage the debt situation and your stipulation around growth. I think those those don't totally alleviate my concern, but it's better with those two stipulations in my opinion. Well, and I'd like to note for the record that in, uh, in pre-conversations with uh, Mr. Machado, um, I did share a concern that um, wanting to make sure that our, our the charter schools that we do approve, um, that we hold their feet to the fire and that we don't get these um, charters lightly and strong academic performance is what we expect. Um, and so um, making sure that um, we actually are going to put a stipulation in that I'll read in the thing that they apply, that they appear annually in November um, to report before the Charter School Advisory Board regarding the school's academic, financial, and governance performance. And um, I'll, I'll read that in just a second. Okay, are you ready for my recommendation? Yes, I am. Your motion. Okay. I move that the State Board of Education accept the Charter School Advisory Board's recommendation to permit assumption of the charter currently held by Heritage Collegiate Leadership Academy by a nonprofit corporation to be formed by a board chaired by Tuesday Sauer, which board will partner with Global Education Resources, LLC, as the EMO with the following conditions. One. The assuming board must agree to the assumption in writing no later than June 30th, 2018. Two, the assuming board must submit a financial plan to the Office of Charter Schools regarding the existing uh, liabilities and debt by June 29th, 2018. Three, the assuming board agrees to operate the school as a co college preparatory school. Four, the term of the charter, once assumed, will be through and including June 30th, 2022. The assuming board agrees to appear before the Charter School Advisory Board annually in November regarding the school's academic, financial, and governance performance. And the last condition is that the assuming board must exceed, meet or exceed growth at the end of the first year. Do I have a second? 
did that include the uh, the, the debt plan? I didn't. Uh, it did. It was yeah, number two. Okay. Which which shall be submitted by June 29, 2018, to the Office of Charter Schools. Okay. Motion by Miss White. Is there a second? Second, Justine. Second by Mr. Chastain. Uh, hearing no other discussion, uh, Dr. Townsend Smith, will you call the roll? Chairman Covey? Yes. Vice Chair Davis? Yes. Mr. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Chastain? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Willoughby? Yes. Mr. Keenan? Ms. Taylor? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's approved unanimously. And Ms. White, uh, you have a discussion item. I do. Thank you. I have um, an item for discussion for the approval of, um, Let me switch over to that, excuse me, of a restart application yes. from Elizabeth City Pasquotank County School. And PW Moore Elementary School. And Elizabeth City Middle School for those two. We heard those last month. Ms. White, this is yes. Nancy Barber. Um, good morning. The application that we have before us for discussion today is from Washington County Schools for Washington High School. They submitted their application. Ms. Barber, you're correct. I call on you to, to bring this to our committee. <laughs> Um, thank you. Good morning. Um, Good morning. <laughs> the Washington County Schools submitted an application to us um, very soon after your last board meeting, and so we wanted to bring that before you for discussion today. <clears throat> And they are interested in um, establishing Washington County High School as a restart school. So we wanted to get it on the agenda for discussion so that we could read over it and get them um, an approval quickly if their application is together. So I'm happy to answer any questions. We just got this and have not read it in detail yet, but we wanted to bring it to you in this called meeting so that we could notify Washington as soon as possible. Okay, any questions from my colleagues? Sorry, I had moved down to consent. So um, it, this item is submitted for discussion. Thank you, Ms. Barber. This is Greg Alcorn. I've read through it. It looks very professionally prepared. Um, is there a sense of urgency to this? Ms. Barber. Uh, there is not a sense of urgency, but um, I'm sure that Washington County Schools would appreciate if you want to move it to action on first read. I'll defer to Ms. White. Thank you. I, I have not had a chance to um, to read through, but um, I, I don't see a problem with moving to action on first read if Ms. Barber um, agrees that it would be an appropriate timeline for them. Um, well, our area has actually been very involved with Washington, so we have some familiarity with it. So I don't have any problem moving it to action on first read. Okay, without objection, um, uh, Ms. White, if you'd like to make a motion. Okay, um, I uh, um, recommend that the um, State Board of Education approve the submission of um, Washington County School System, Washington County High School for its restart application. Motion by Ms. White. Is there a second? Second, Alcorn. Yeah. Second by Mr. Alcorn. Um, uh, Dr. Townsend Smith, will you call the roll, please? Chairman Covey? Yes. Vice Chair Davis? Yes. Mr. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Chastain? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Willoughby? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Okay, uh, Ms. White, uh, the motion passes unanimously, and I think that ends your committee. Am I correct? It does under action, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Now um, we'll move to the consent agenda, and I guess the first question I'll ask, is there any board member that wants 
one of these items removed from the consent agenda. Hearing none, then I will ask for a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda. Mr. Chair, this is Mrs. White. I recommend we approve all of the items that appear on the consent agenda. Okay, motion by Ms. White, second by? Alcorn. Uh, Mr. Alcorn, um, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, well, excuse me, please call the roll, Dr. Townsend Smith. Jerry Covey? Uh, yes. Vice Chair Davis? Yes. Mr. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Chastain? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Willoughby? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Uh, passes unanimously. Uh, thank you, board members, advisors, staff, for your attention and participation today. When we meet again, it will be right after the 4th of July holiday, and I hope everybody enjoys time with family and friends. Uh, with no additional business for open session of the board at this time, uh, I will ask for a motion to go into closed session and remind the audience uh, uh, that as soon as we uh, come out of closed session, we will return to open session and will adjourn immediately. So Mr. Davis, do you have a motion? I move that the State Board of Education go into closed session to discuss personnel matters and to consult with our attorneys on attorney-client privilege matters, including North Carolina State Board of Education versus State of North Carolina and Mark Johnson. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Second. Second, Mr. McDevitt. Okay, uh, Dr. Townsend Smith, please call the roll. Chairman Covey. Yes. And Vice Chair Davis. Yes. Mr. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Chastain? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Willoughby? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Okay, the motion stands approved, and uh, we will uh, go into closed session in five minutes. Lynn Harvey has left the conference. Okay. I assume we all call back in, right? Yes. Yes, sir.